My name is Sarah Collins and I'm the author of The Confessions of Franny Langton. The crime at the heart of the novel is that Franny is accused of the double murder of her employers. Um, Mr. Benham, who is a very famous natural philosopher, is found murdered in his library after an elaborate soiree that's taken place in his house, um, which was meant as a kind of celebration of a debate that had happened at the Royal Society of Science earlier that day. And Madame Benham, who is his wife, is found murdered in her bed with Franny lying asleep next to her. And suspicion immediately falls on Franny because she's asleep uh, covered in blood. The crime itself is um, pure imagination, but the defense that Franny's barrister puts forward for her in the novel, which is coined the sleepwalking defense, uh, was inspired by my research into some actual cases. So I spent a lot of time trawling the Old Bailey archives online. But the kernel for that defense actually came from an American case. It was the trial of Albert Terrell in Boston in 1846. And he was accused of murdering a prostitute who was found um, uh, dead in her, in, a, in her room in her boarding house with a blood-stained razor and some men's bloody clothing lying next to her. Albert Terrell was the last person to have been seen that evening going into her room. And he had also been seen uh, trying to negotiate a carriage from one of the stable keepers at the, at the boarding house, uh, which he then used to try and escape to Canada. Um, so he was in a pickle, but his lawyer uh, put forward this defense for him that basically if he had killed uh, this woman, he wouldn't or shouldn't be held responsible for it because he would have done it in a somnambulistic trance. And surprisingly, the jury accepted this and he was acquitted. Um, so uh, large aspects of the defense that's put forward for Franny um, during her trial are actually taken from that case, as well as the expert evidence. So there was testimony on behalf of Albert Terrell, not only from people who swore to the fact that he had been a sleepwalker all of his life, but from so-called medical men who talked about the state of the mind during an episode of sleepwalking and how you're essentially in these two states of consciousness at the same time, asleep and awake, which I thought was a good metaphor really for Franny's exploration of her own guilt. Um, but the fact of the matter is that uh, things weren't always so lucky for black defendants at the Old Bailey. Um, so Terrell was acquitted, but many black defendants weren't even really given fair trials. Um, and I came across a lot of that in my research as well. The fact that there were questions essentially about whether black people were even competent to take the oath, whether they were human. So there's a line in the book where Pettigrew, Franny's lawyer, asks her whether she's a Christian. And what he's really getting at is the fact that if she could convince the jurors that she had been baptized, they might be more likely to believe that she was a, a person worthy of fair consideration. That was a real problem um, during those days. And it seemed to me that that question, which arose in the context of the courtroom, was really the same thing at the heart of all of the scientific debate that the novel also explores, which is who is entitled to say who can and cannot be considered a, a man. Um, and so th I thought the trial aspects and the science aspects of the novel um, were tied together in answering that question.